Hey, Ahmed, I just heard you on NPR, and I want to say uh, that it makes me very, very happy to hear that you are concerned about uh, the election of Donald Trump, and I couldn't be more happier with uh, the way things are going. And, you know, the American people, the true American people, have been anxious for years, and uh, last night uh, they had spoken, and they had spoken to us, huh? uh, in such a way as to let the world know that the that there was a sleeping giant. If you want uh, Muslims uh, to be accepted in this country, and I don't believe we should be taking on any Muslims or any immigration at this point, we have a lot of problems of our own that need to get fixed, such as the 92% uh, black unemployment rate in Chicago. Um, but until things like that get fixed, um, if you want Muslims to be accepted in this country, someone needs to come out and say that, yes, we are Muslim, but we we respect everyone's rights, uh, religious rights, their, their First Amendment rights, uh, and we believe in the spirit of America, we believe in the, the supreme uh, constitutionality of this republic. If you can come out and profess and state that the, that the United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land and not Sharia law, not religious uh, affiliations, then you would have come a long way. So if you want a little bit of advice, go that way. All right? And until you guys do that, until, until people do that, no matter what religion that they're from, whether it be Christian or, or Judaism, Judaism, whatever, okay, there's always going to be a problem there. All right? So just a little bit of advice. And, and again, I'm very, very happy with the results I, last night. Have a good day, sir. Goodbye. Good afternoon. This is Ahmed Rahab with Care Chicago. I was on the radio this morning. You left me a message. Yes, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I just wanted to give you a courtesy of a call back. Um, I heard your message, and to the extent that you asked me a question in the message, I'm happy to answer it for you. You asked if um, you'd like to hear a Muslim uphold the constitutionality of the Republic and that they stand with the Constitution rather than a different law, be it Sharia law or something else. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be that Muslim, to tell you just that, to let you know that this is what I believe and what I think most Muslims in this country do believe. Um, we are American citizens. We uphold the Constitution as a supreme law of the land. In fact, our concerns about the issues of civil rights abuses and discrimination, and bigotry and hatred is precisely because we believe that not only are they inhuman, but they also go against the founding principles of this nation, as well as the laws and the safeguards of the Constitution. Yeah, I'd like to say that I appreciate the call back and the follow up, and, uh, and, I, and I respect the answer. I think, it's, I think that's fantastic. Um, moving forward, <clears throat> my recommendation would be, um, and maybe we're facing the same problem here, but either the media is not representing uh, the, your community accurately or something else is going on, which uh, we, we may be unaware. Uh, but I would say that uh, whether it be NPR, CNN, or whatever other media outlet uh, that exists, that we keep an eye on that, on the message that they're giving to Americans because it's, you know, th this, this election has been one that's overcome the media which is probably one of the reasons why I'm why I'm very happy with it. But it also may be the same reason that uh, we also may be, uh, may be facing the same potential sort of, uh, uh, I, don't want, I hate to use the term enemy, but if the media is not is not representing the, the Muslim community in such a way as to promote uh, unity and cooperation, then I think that's a problem. And I think we've, we've seen a lot of that with the Black Lives Matter community. I think we've seen that all across uh, all across the media over the last I don't know 16 years. Yeah. Listen, um, listen, you no. know, I was ever a supporter of Bush, and uh, I voted for, for for Obama in his first term, and and so that gives a little history to my background and, and where I come from. But yeah, and that's and, that, and that's fine. And, and listen, I just want to um, let you know that part of the reason why I decided to call you is because I didn't want to depend on the media to filter my message. Um, you took the time out of your busy schedule, which I do appreciate, to let me know your views, some of which I agree with, others of which I don't. And I wanted to give you the same courtesy back because I believe that this country can only move forward if we can have a human-to-human -human dialogue with one another that is respectful, that is open. We will have our differences. I loathe your candidate. I think Trump is terrible. 
terrible for America. But that's okay. That's okay. I voted, you voted, you won, I lost. I will still stand for what I believe in, which include equal rights, which include no hatred, no discrimination, no bigotry, no misogyny, no sexism, no rape culture, right? Respect for Latinos and blacks as much as for whites and anybody else. These are my principles. I will stand for them. Um, and I hope you do too, by the way. But I do it. I do it. I just I'd like to ask you one last question. And, and like I said, I, I really appreciate the call. It's actually an honor to have you call me back. And, uh, oh, thank I, you. I appreciate your work. I do, and I and, and I do support your, everything you just said because I am the same way. We may say, see things differently, but at the end of the day, the Constitution is what we should be looking toward as our, as our sort of our guiding light, and and, and 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 that's really about freedom and freedom for everybody. So that's great. But. Uh, when you hear things like this, I, I have a particular viewpoint on the media, obviously, but uh, just out of like out of England, um, and I don't suspect that you would agree with this, but in England there was the the uh, the rape case of uh, you know I think there were X amount of Pakistani Muslims that they have raped over fourteen hundred girls, some who are pregnant, uh, some as young as twelve years old. I mean I, I don't see you 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 have to come out and condemn that kind of thing also because um, obviously if you don't then. I, I would never say that you're complicit in it because that's not fair. You know, you may be neutral. You just don't want to get involved in that issue. But um, by coming out against that and coming out against it uh, wholeheartedly um, would be would be a benefit also. Well, well you know, let me just uh, mirror this back to you. Um, have you come out in the past or are willing to come out in the future against white rapists? Absolutely. I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll come out against any rapist. No one has any. Uh -huh. no one but has, that's the point, though. Any rapist. Anybody. See, that's the point. Rape is the problem. When we begin to contextualize a crime within someone's ethnic group or religious group, we are engaging in a form of bigotry because we, we fail to understand that sin and crime occurs at the individual human level. Now, that human who is a criminal has been in the past and will be in the future of various religions, races, and backgrounds. It's always the case, as will the good people. So goodness, and this is what my faith teaches, goodness and evil is at the hum, individual human level. It isn't at the level of 3,000 people, 50,000 people that all, you know, sin exactly the same way because they have the same color or the same religion. Um, you know, you make your own decisions in life. And so do you know why that, uh, why that went on for so long, that those, those, uh, those uh, race games, those gang rapes, and then the, yeah, but, the Constitution? Uh, uh, the, the way you set up the way you set it up is 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 not helping the, the truth of the situation um you're looking at cases of rape by pakistanis but if you look at cases of rape period you'll find that they remain a minority they're not overrepresented in rape versus their 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 population um so this is what often happens when there is rhetoric or discourse on blacks or Latinos or Muslims or other and minorities. You, and you're absolutely right, but that, I wanted, the, the reason why they had gone on so long because the police officers knew about it and did not want to be labeled as racist. So to, to go back to your point, we do need to focus on the act itself and, and the sin itself or however we choose to describe it, not based upon a group of people right right but let me i mean let me be clear if there is a police officer who knows of a case of rape and looks the other way for any reason including the reason of i fear being a racist that officer is shirking the responsibility before god and before humanity okay and i would say that this officer is, is absolutely uh, um, uh, sort of contributing to the victims being victimized um, this goes for any race Okay, if there's a white police officer who looks the other way because of you know a criminal happens to be white, um, and, you know, and he is a racist, <laughs> then that's a problem too. If he looks the other way because the criminal happens to be you know colored and he fears being a racist, that's a problem too. So we don't need to again contextualize things in race and religion, but rather in acts and attitudes. But, right, so I just hope that the again so. We're, we're, for one, our, our elected officials, no matter where they where they are, uh, hopefully they can see see that. And secondly, we're going to be fighting against the media, who is looking to polarize groups of people. Uh, but based upon what you just said, you know, my name is Justin Sleeper. I'm actually an alternate delegate uh, from Congressional District Two in Massachusetts. Uh, I was on the Land Paul plate. I'm a libertarian uh, at heart, and um, but I've always supported Donald Trump and. From what I know of Donald Trump, from what I know of the people in, in the party and, and, and of myself, everything you just said we would agree with. And I think so. We need to have more dialogue and open discussion because 
there's really no reason to have this rift between people. And I think that we all, I think everything you just said would be appreciated and respected um, in the circles that I'm familiar with. So yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to extend myself out to any audiences. I intend to do that and have done that in the past within my locale where I work here in the Chicagoland area and beyond. If there are further opportunities, I'll take them in a, in a heartbeat. I just want to uh, sort of leave you with a parting thought as well. And that is, while you may have voted for this candidate based on uh, legitimate reasons, many have voted out of spite or hatred or bigotry against minorities. Um, you do not share that view uh, from what I take from, from your you know statements, but I would want you to push back against that kind of thinking within the circles that you may frequent. Because I think when you do that, you're not doing me a favor, or you're not doing me a service, but you're doing America a favor and a service. And and look, I, I don't wanna you know, broad brush any group of people, but you will be able to tell. You know, you're a smart guy, you'll be able to tell. And when you see it, I say speak up as well. You know, I hold myself to the same standard. If I see, you know, hatred within any of the circles that I frequent, okay, be it against somebody who's not in the room, I will speak mm -hmm. out. I will not stay silent, okay? And do that for everybody because it goes yes. both ways. Like, that, that's what I just said. It goes both ways. But, uh -huh. I just, I, but, but look, clearly we have a problem of Islamophobia in this country. We have a problem of discrimination and hate crimes. And, you know, we're 1% of the population. We can't do this alone. We need guys like you to speak out as well and to resist the temptation of looking at Muslims as one black box of suspicion and, you know, a uh, sort of behavior that is threatening to the nation, etc. Most Muslims are just like you and me. Mm -hmm. Human beings who wake up in the morning, you know, this morning I fed my kids breakfast, I kissed them, I went to work, uh, you know, I come back home, I try to put food on the table. My biggest aspiration is to raise them as good citizens of this country, good citizens of this world, okay? That's why I work hard, yeah. that's why I do what I do. And most people, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, agnostics, atheists, Jews, Christians, are the same way, okay? On either side of this electoral divide. That's what I believe. But when we allow anyone, including ourselves, to uh, explain away our problems by pinning them on groups of people, rather than on digging down scientifically to look at the root of the problem, you know, we need to band together and fix our education, fix our infrastructure, bring America back up into the top echelons of all of the indicators of success. Um, we're not the best at education. We're not the best when it comes to healthcare. We're not the best when it comes to taking care of our own. We have a lot of work to do, and I don't want to waste time on these racial and religious, ridiculous uh, uh, rhetorical debates in which people are put down, but rather band together to build this country back up. That's what I want to do. That's great. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if you have a Facebook account. I do. Um, it's a good way to stay in touch. Um, um, I have a good friend. His name is Marvin Ramadan. He gives a, uh, he's, a, he's a Muslim, and, uh, and uh, he gives a speech at the UN uh, uh, every quarter. He's a good friend of mine. Um, he, it's not like he tried to convert me, but he did. But after our discussions, he did say things like, you know, I just don't know why you're, you're, you're not a Muslim, Justin. But, but, uh, but he's, he's a friend, and, and it's not like, I, I, I'm, not a, uh, I'm not a xenophobe or... Well, whatever, it's not, it's not what it comes down to, but it does come down to democracy and, and what the people say they should get, and, and the, subversion of, the subversion of that democracy is my greatest uh, way. But, um, well, listen, I appreciate this conversation. I appreciate you reaching out. And if you give me your email, I'll be happy to give you my contact information if you want to stay in touch. Uh, i got to run yeah. to a meeting, but I, I do appreciate yeah. this yeah. Uh, conversation. Absolutely. It's, it's uh, J.W. Sleeper. All right. What's your first name again? It's Justin. All right. Well, thank you, Justin. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the call. No problem. Godspeed. Take care. You too. Thanks.